First, there was an economic crisis, and then that crisis forced us to make a massive U-turn to go to the IMF. That IMF program is dependent now on a successful debt action program. Tonight, as we speak, that debt action program is in itself in crisis. We're going to hear tonight from the individual bondholders, the aspect of this that was introduced by the finance ministry on the eve of Christmas. The problem is because of the Christmas period and the New Year festivities, many have not paid attention to it. It is just in the last few days that people are waking up to the reality that their individual bonds are going to be affected by this. And that has sparked a whole new wave of concern and complaints as well. And we're going to get into that. There are 250 of these individual bondholders who are now ready to fight, rolling up their sleeves, asking government to spare their bonds. You, when the pension funds started agitating on this very show, we, we hosted them and they talked. You saw who the pension funds represent. They represented the workers of this country. And so we heard from the workers' union, the, the, G, the, the, the Ghana Medical Association, the, um, the, the NAGRA, the teachers, etc. They came on this show and they spoke. The question is, who are individual bondholders? That's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be bringing individual bondholders in to hear from them. Um, there's a myth around individual bondholders. We want to bust those myths tonight as we get into the hard issues about how this will affect real life. So talk about pension. These are individuals also uh, who are going to be affected by this. So this is the issue I was talking about. There was this U10 on the 5th of December, saying in for, when, uh, on the 5th of December, there was an emphatic statement made by the finance ministry that individual bondholders will not be affected. That's how it started. And then on the 3rd, and this is just, what, two weeks after this announcement, just less than three weeks after the initial declaration that individual bondholders will not be affected. On the 23rd, literally on the eve of Christmas, Another statement was issued by the finance ministry now saying individual bondholders will now be affected. Why? Because they had to exempt the pension funds from it. So that's where we are tonight. If you didn't know before, who is an individual bondholder? This is a natural person. Somebody like me who buys the bond by himself is an individual bondholder. And you can define this as opposed to institutional bondholders such as a pension fund that had taken your pensions money and had decided to now buy bonds, that's a way of investing, so they can get money to pay you when your pensions are due. Those are institutional bondholders. But when you do it yourself, when you save your money and you go to your bank and you say, buy me bonds, that is an individual bondholder because it's your name on, on, the, on the title, the, the bond uh, document. That's, that's how you distinguish it. You are a natural person. Now, according to the 2021 debt report, we're trying to get down to some of the details of what constitutes the individual bond holdings. The holdings by a non-bank sector increased uh, from 33.8% to 30.2%. Now, this mainly was attributed to the increased participation of individual investors. So a lot of people who are now individuals who have saved money all their lives, who decided now to buy some bonds and live off that. And so that's what led to the increase. And now this is the breakdown from the finance ministry. The thing though is, this is all the, the billions you see here is all government securities, including bonds. So we don't have an isolated number. But that tells you a story, right? Because you see a individual's holding of, of, of these securities. It's a consistent rise from 2018 to 2021 of 16.72 billion. These are individuals who have decided to lend money to government and make some returns of that so they can live. And the monies have been going up including individual bonds. So that's a picture there. But the interesting point I found in the document, one of the documents that was released very recently, covering the new uh, memorandum, covering the debt exchange program, on the, after they did the amendment to include individual bond holdings, is an interesting one. As I've said already, 250 of these individual bond holders have served notice they will be taking up a class action if government doesn't back off. But listen to what the finance minister is telling poor folks who have saved all their money and have decided to buy government bonds and lend to the government. Finance minister is warning, is warning all individual bondholders that don't even bother to sue because if you bother to sue, you are 
very likely to fail. Even if you win, you can't execute that judgment. Don't take my word for it. Read his own words in the document that was released and issued by, the, by him covering the debt exchange program. He says, quote, all offers made by eligible holders are irrevocable, right? Um, as, as, you, as you see there, the Republic shall, in the sole discretion, determine whether to accept or reject any offer without any obligation to provide reasons for it. So even if you join, they can decide to, to reject it. Then it says, the Republic of Ghana is a sovereign state. Consequently, it may be difficult. This is a direct quote from the finance ministry document. It may be difficult for eligible holders of eligible bonds to obtain or realize awards against the Republic. In other words, simple terms, the finance minister is telling bondholders, and you hear many of them tonight, whose very lives depend on these monies they've, they've lent to the government. Finance minister is telling them that if you attempt to sue me, you may fail. As he says there in, in this statement, it may be difficult for eligible holders of bonds to obtain or realize awards against the Republic. But even if you win, he says here that the Republic has submitted to the jurisdiction of the courts. In other words, and they haven't waived any immunity. You can sue us. But I wanted to focus on this part for me, where the finance minister says um, in, the, in the bit here that I will isolate uh, for you in a second, right here. He says, well, you can, in essence, sue us. We have not waived, we have waived our immunity, right? We have waived our immunity. So you can sue. You can sue. However, the finance minister says, if you decide to go ahead and sue, any, if you decided to go ahead and sue, which is the next slide, by the way. I want to go back to this. If you decide to sue, the Republic has not, however, waived immunity from execution or attachment in respect of setting of his assets. What this simply means is that yes, we have waived our immunity so you can sue us. But if you win, it will be difficult for you to execute or attach some of the state's assets, which is very interesting indeed. If you win, for example, you can seize the finance minister's car because it's a state vehicle. So provided you can prove that it's a state vehicle, belongs to the state, and, and sell off and defray your cost that you put in. That's what happened in cases such as the Argentina case. There was an Argentina military ship that was docked in Ghana when it defaulted. When the bondholders, the investors, won the case on international, in, in, in international courts, they located a, an Argentina ship on the shores of Ghana. I got a local uh, law firm to go to court and, and seize the Argentine, Argentinian ship. Now, the thing is that if individual bondholders win and you have to get your money back, you can seize government assets. And the finance minister is telling you that even if you win, he says for you, be difficult to win. That's what he says. If, even if you win, it's going to be difficult. We haven't waived the immunity from execution and attachment. That's an interesting point. Telling, but we'll hear from the bondholders themselves uh, what they make of, of, this, of this interesting point. And then the interesting point, according to the IMF, that is, is, for, is important for me. Domestic debt restructuring may be easier to accomplish. Authorities can simply elect to alter the terms of the debt contract through change the domestic law, but that will be dangerous. That already the Attorney General has said that this whole idea of trying to go through the you know, compulsory means is it's, it's, it's wrong. It's against the laws. It will be difficult to enforce. That's what they're doing voluntary. But is it really voluntary when the alternative is that we can't pay you? We'll speak to individual bondholders tonight on this very important matter of people's hard-earned uh, resource that they've decided to put in government bonds. Stay with me. When I return, a host of individual bondholders will join me for a conversation. We're going to put the faces to this. These are not abstract individuals. These are real individuals. And you hear their stories. And they will tell you um, what they expect of the government at this time when it comes to this extreme. Stay with me.
And thanks for joining us on PM Express. I want to bring in uh, the individual bondholders who have decided to join us tonight. Uh, Roberta uh, City is, uh, is a bondholder herself, uh, joins us on Zoom. Also joining us tonight is uh, Samuel Bequing. He's also a, a, an individual bondholder. Uh, we'll be joined by Reverend uh, Beblevu. He's also a bondholder. Um, uh, Francis Asidu uh, will also join us, an individual bondholder. Uh, Kojo uh, Japan uh, will also join us uh, very shortly because he himself uh, he is he's been mobilizing some of the individuals uh, for the um, for for the uh, uh, the court action, the class action that we've heard of, and he will join us also on the show tonight. Uh, so so stay with us. And we're also Dr. Uh, Rich Mondechianhini. Uh, he's a banking consultant. Will also join us uh, on 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 the show uh, tonight as we speak to many of these affected uh, individuals uh, to get to the heart of. Uh, how this is affecting uh, their very lives uh, on, on the matter. And uh, very shortly, uh, Kojo Ejapon uh, Abanaba, he himself is the, is the man, as I said, who has been uh, the main voice, a pivot around which the class action uh, has revolved, uh, will join us. But uh, let me start with um, Roberta, uh, who, who, as I said earlier, uh, is joining us uh, right now. Roberta, uh, so you are obviously an individual bondholder uh, in this matter, and, and, and I want to understand this uh, from you as far as you're concerned. When did you decide to buy the bonds? Okay, so I bought the bonds that was um, last year, January. I bought the bonds last year, January. Okay, so you, this is very interesting because you bought it in January and then a few months later, that's when the crisis became very intense. Uh, I, I'm, so when did you hear about the inclusion of your bond in this exchange program? So I saw it um, online, like uh, uh, someone sent it to me, that is around, I think, um, 26 during the Christmas uh, holidays festivities that was when i saw it okay so, so how important are these bonds to you so this is what happened um i worked with the bank for almost 18 years and then there was a voluntary exit and then i took the package that was on uh, 31st december Right after 31st December, I used the money to buy the bonds in January. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, I used the money to buy the bonds in January. Sorry, can, can you um, repeat the question again? I, no, I, that's, a, that's it. I mean, t tell me the story. Tell me your story. Why, why, is the, why are the bonds? Why did you decide to buy the bonds? And what are the circumstances surrounding that purchase? 31st January, uh, 31st December 2020, I left, uh, 21, I left the job. January, I use it to buy the bonds because um, as I was expecting that the coupon will help me pay school fees. The coupon will help with my upkeep till I land myself a new job. So that is how come I bought the bonds. I had the option to either buy T-bill or the bonds. But I, took, I bought the bonds because I considered the coupon rate. And then even though it was inadequate, but I thought that would help me a bit that will cushion me a bit till I, I land myself another job. Okay, so what it is is that as we speak tonight, you are unemployed. Yes, I'm I'm unemployed. Okay, and and you you got the your voluntary exit payments yes. surrounding the job. Mm -hmm. Your your let's call it the severance package that you got yes. it is what you invested in the in the bonds. Yes, yes. Okay, so I you've been think. living off the the coupons, the the yes. the, the interest you've been getting. For, yes. for, for uh, it, it's been it's been uh, I've I've just had it I think January this January is the second time I'm 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 having a coupon okay. I'm getting an interest on the bond. Have they have they paid your January coupon? Because yes, because that one matured on the third of January. On, on the on the on the third of January. Yes, okay, yes. and you say that you're also a mother, and that's why you you use the interest to pay your children's school fees. Sorry. Hello, Roberta. Sorry. sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You say that you use the coupons, as in the the returns you get from the bond. That's what you use to pay your children's school fees. Yes, and for the family upkeep. Yes, that's what I use. I help 
together with my husband, that's what we, 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 we feed on. That's what we are surviving on. How, how many children do you have? And they are, are, have they, are they all of them in school? Yes, I have five children. The first one is now entering into the university. The second one is done with, um, uh, uh, it's also about entering into SHS. I have a set of twins, and then the, the one is also in GHS too. Okay. So all these children rely yeah. on the bonds and the returns you get so they survive and they pay their school fees. Yes, the coupon, yes. The coupons, okay. I, I, I get yes. it. So this is a family of seven then that all rely on, on the bonds that yes. you bought. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, stay, stay with me. Um, stay with me, Robert. I want to bring in Reverend Begblevu. Hello, Reverend. Hello, Reverend. Yes, good evening, my brother. Reverend. I'm on the line speaking. Reverend, thanks for joining us. It's been my pleasure. Great. Reverend, you, also, you are also a bondholder? Yes, very sure. Okay. From, yeah. what, from the briefing I got, you, you are a pensioner? Correct me if I'm wrong. You are right. I retired in 2021. In 2021. Okay. What, 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 so you, what, what, where did you work? Give me the circumstance around your retirement. Where did you work? Yeah, I'm a reverend minister. I started teaching at top teaching and was a full-time reverend minister of the Global Evangelical Church. And when I retired, I had to use my money to buy a bond before this problem. Okay. Yes. Can you, you want to share with us how much bonds you bought with your retirement package? The money? Yes. Not advisable, my brother. Okay. But, but the money I got from my business in its contribution, I was having some property, piece of land. I sold it, had the money together so that I can make the profits from my bond and okay. take care of my children. Okay. So what it means is that you sold, you, 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 you retired, you took your lump sum, you sold your property, and you invested yeah. it in the bonds? Yes. Okay. Put it in the bond. Yeah. Because I'm saying that's to you the benefit to take care of my children. Because how much will be, I am a pastor, as I'm saying, how much will be my benefit, my brother, from this unit? So I have to get another money to add to this money to make it somehow valuable. Okay. And so when did you buy the bonds? Uh, I was having some money some time ago, which I used to buy it for three years. And that was completed. Uh, use another money to buy it in 2020. Precisely, 2020, January 2020. And the first maturity was 20. No, excuse me to say. I bought it in 2021, January 2021, 4th January 2021. So that January 2022 was the, the end of it. So, and so, so you're so I, 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 Am I making sense? You are making perfect sense. Yeah. Um, and, and so you, you, you use the money to take care of your children, but I'm sure you also survive on, on that same money. Yes. But the good thing is that I'm on contract. So that contract is what I'm using for my personal use, and I'm using the benefit of the bond to pay my daughter's school fees as UPSA. So if it, I take my business, take matter of account, any time the money comes in, I transfer it to my daughter so that she can use it to pay her school fees. Even this morning, I was at the bank to complain about my benefit. The benefit was due on 3rd uh, January 2023. But no notice was given me. And I went to the bank. Fortunately, the money came. But no notification was given me. And I was thinking how to get money to be given to my daughter for her school fees. Hmm. So your daughter's education for now hmm. depends on the bonds. I'm telling you the truth, my brother. Okay. I'm telling you the truth. I can give you a bank woman's number and name. And she's the one 
on the transaction for us. Anytime the money comes, I call her. I send the money to my daughter to pay. And she's the one releasing the money to my daughter. She's a, a family friend. She knows everything about my transaction. Even if I die today, she knows everything about my transaction. Hmm. A very powerful story indeed of, of, of how an individual bondholder, this is somebody who retired as a, as a pastor and a teacher, takes everything he, he's made over time and his pensions and invested it in bonds and he's living uh, in that uh, the, the, the government himself can go and check all my documents, my name, everything. They can go and check. When I retire, they, what I use the money for, hmm. my silly, everything, the silly can confirm me that they retire me on yeah. Reverend, please stay with me for a second. Let me bring in Samuel. Samuel, do you identify with all the, I mean, the Roberta and then Reverend's case, both of them? I, I know you're also a, a bond holder. It's, it's quite appalling and sad as, at the same time. Given that the government um, plan with the IMF was indeed to put, have a, a very, um, you know, robust social protection with regards to this negotiation. Um, if you may know, the history is very clear. Most people investment, I wasn't part of it. Most people investment was in these savings and loans and, and, and this microfinance and some other banking investment as well. And then with that particular crisis, people moved a lot of their investment because there weren't other uh, investment option for many people. And then we all felt, you know, government bond was one of the safest. Indeed, it was the safest investment that we had in Ghana. So similar to others, I also bought mine in 2021 um, with the hope that, you know, I had, you know, work very hard to make some money to be able to use that for my children's school fees as well. Uh, and indeed, because of that, I had to purchase the 10 year bond, which was expected to um, I did it in the secondary market anyway, but it was expected to uh, be matured, I think, in 2032 um, because I felt it was a long term. Now school school has reopened, just reopened. And you, you can imagine the messages from the schools on WhatsApp and others trying to tell you about the school fees. Um, with this news, and, and the sad situation is that the information about the decision to include individual bondholders was kind of slotting during the Christmas. So many people didn't really um, pay attention to that until probably 27th, 29th, when people noticed that with the exemption of the pensions, individual bondholders have been included. If you analyze that particular decision, right now the Im Im impact i'm not sure whether the government has done the impact which is which the same issue about the social protection the impact of including individual bondholders on people's disposable income compared to even the pensions or even other uh, uh, other maybe measures such as cutting uh, at this time i would say unnecessary expenditures uh, to make sure it makes up for that so for me um it's a situation the communication is very bad um, I did it through Data Bank. Data Bank has organized some meeting with individual bondholders, but unfortunately, the information that came was one-sided. Even though they say, government says, Data Bank is just relaying that information. Government says that this is voluntary, but we ask them, what is the consequence of deciding not to take part of this? And they say, government didn't give them any information with that. It is just now that I'm realizing that the government thinks that uh, even though it has waived its immunity, that it may not be able to pay even if you decide not to participate. And I think, as you said, Argentina has experienced it, Sri Lanka has experienced it. Government has to be aware that other countries have seen suits similar to what, in case they continue to include ours, and we decide not to sign up, we may have to go with that suit. And if the government thinks that it's not going to work, I think you should look at other examples that have happened. We would definitely have to pursue that because the impact on our disposable income and our day-to-day -day life might be bigger, particularly for young people like, like us, uh, compared to even the pension funds that have been included. Exempted, sorry. I mean, and I want to bring in um, Dr. Richmond Tiahine. Uh, Dr. Tiahine, so you've heard the stories, and I, you, were, you were sharing with me on, on radio that your phone has been, has been ringing on end. A lot of people are calling you to try and get clarity on what is happening. People whose very lives 
depend on, on the bonds that they've invested in, some of them using the returns to buy medicines to, to survive. Hello, Dr. Chiani. Okay, Doc, can you please unmute for me if you can? Okay, uh, let, me, let me go to Roberta. R Roberta, so, I mean, are you able to, are you, are you, Dr. Chiahane is back, okay, apologies. So let me go to Dr. Chiahane, who is back. Dr. Chiahane, can you hear me? Doc, please unmute for me. Okay, let's uh, get Roberto as uh, Doc uh, settles with his equipment there on, on Zoom. Roberta, are you able to survive if your funds get locked up under the action program? You and your, and your five children? Is Roberto on? Hello? Yes, Roberta. I mean, I'm, I was wondering. Yes, no. I was wondering if you're able to survive if your funds get locked up under the proposed election program for the for the long. Not for the at period. all. Not at all, because that is the money I'm surviving on. That is the money I'm surviving. The coupon is what I'm surviving on. Now, someone will ask, but is she not married? Yes, I am married, and my husband's um, my husband also is into contract. But unfortunately, the contract is also not paying. Fine, so let's put that aside. It is about the bond holding. So do I survive? We can't survive if it is being held, if the bonds are being held or the bonds are being rolled in, into the debt exchange. So please, the government should please think about this. 17 and a half years working and then coming home, no. Nobody should include that into their debt exchange. They should think of getting another way. If it is about they cutting their expenditures, yes. But please, on your platform, we are getting through to the finance minister. He shouldn't in any way include our bonds into his debt exchange. We are begging him because I can't survive. How much am I even getting on the coupon? It isn't even up to a 30,000. And look at the children I have, the number of children with the family I have. It can't even, I mean, it is inadequate. So how do you include me into a debt exchange program? It's a no-no. It's mm. a no-no. I mean, it's a no -no. Let, let, let me speak to uh, Re Reverend. The Reverend is a pensioner, and as you, as you heard him say earlier, he retired, took his lump sum, invested. In fact, sold some of his properties as well, invested. So he can take off his children and himself. I mean, Reverend, you, 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 you've heard people Sometimes when they when they hear individual bondholders, yeah. they they sort of believe that individual bondholders um, should not be too affected if mm -hmm. if their bonds get included. What do you yeah. say? What do you say to those? I'm sure you've heard people say that that individual bondholders yeah, they should be okay. Um, they, they possibly are wealthy people who can who can survive. What do you say to that? What do you say to that when you hear it? Okay, if a company is having a bond, it means that maybe they are taking part of their salary or part of their money, putting it in a bucket to buy a bond for the company. But here is the case, it is an individual bond. So nothing is coming from uh, anywhere. Nothing. You see, when they started this headcount issue, I rushed to the bank to reverse my <laughs> my bond, and they are charging me 30% of my money. So assuming that I want to, uh, I deposited 10,000, they are giving me, let's say, 7,000. So where am I going to get 3,000 to make my money a value? They were taking 30% from it. But the agreement is that you take my money for three years, you give me this benefit for the three years. Then you reverse my money back to me. And if you cannot continue again, at least give me my money. Give me my money. So that I can use it for something else. And see the way forward. Now you are taking 30% of the money. So the money is totally devalued. I don't know how to say. I mean... I, I'm, I'm only thinking that the president himself should sit down, the finance minister should sit down and ask themselves, 
If you were the one, if you were the one, they should sit down. Maybe today they are having their money. They don't need anything so that they can misbehave anyhow. They are eating, they are drinking, they are flying, doing anything at all. They are not reasoning. It would this, uh, this is the citizen's uh, life. They live and content. They live and content. They should go on. I mean, Reverend, stay with me. Dr. Chiahani, that's, that's a pensioner talking there. You, you, you were telling me on radio that you've, you've received many, many calls like uh, Reverend, Reverend there. Hello, Dr. Chiahani. I've received so many, many calls telling me stories and they are very pathetic. And when you listen to them, it's a very, very serious situation. Some school fees, some medicals, some upkeeping. To we find very, very difficult. And some of them I cannot choose. To, 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 to cancel them or guide them. So it's a very big challenge. Mm. So when you look at the, I just was explaining the individual bonds and what they constitute in the general debt stock currently. Government excused and exempted the pension funds. And because of that, they brought in the individual bonds. If you look at the quantum that we are talking about, um, can government also exempt the individual bonds and find other alternative ways of blocking that hole? Well, I mean, you, you, they started on the wrong footing. You know. um, apologies with, with this connection there. I, I want to bring back in um, Samuel, who has been on. Samuel, I, I wonder. So you, you said you had a briefing from a data bank. Is that thinking that you should sign on to the debt action program? Um, data bank was quite clear. I'm not sure whether you can hear me. Can you I can, hear me? Yes, I can, yes. Data bank was quite clear that they are just relaying information to us. But um, a lot of us on the call was also very clear that we haven't gotten full information about the entire program and what the intent is, uh, because we haven't had any option in, in terms of information on the option not to sign and what the consequences would be. The uh, government never mentioned anything through data bank uh, to tell us that. And I could feel, and this is my personal thinking, that many of us on the call were very peeved and decided, had decided that they would not be signing on to that particular program, even though we knew very clear that data bank communicated very clear that government success rate was 80%. Um, but most of us on the call were very peeved. And, and also we had pensioners also complaining as well on that particular call. I mean, Roberta, let me ask you, have, have, your, have you been engaged at all either by your bank or by, by government on, on this matter? Do you, have you been adequately armed with information on, on your bonds and what this will mean okay. for you? Not at all, not at all from the bank. And again, too, with the bank, they don't even really understand what is going on. You ask them, they will tell you that they don't know the modalities. They can't explain themselves because government comes and says this. He promises, no, individual bondholders are not part. Today, he says that tomorrow, government comes back and tells us that, yes, he's roping in individual bondholders. So you call them, they, they can't really give you answers. Sometimes they will even call me the Roberta. What, 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 I mean, what is happening? I call my bankers. They don't have answers to me. They don't know what is going on. You see, that's the problem. They, they don't know which advice to give you. They are now relying on me because probably I have a little bit of the uh, of banking experience asking me what is going on. So nobody has told us anything. 
no no one is saying anything with the exception that uh, just was it um four five days ago one of them called that i should pass by the bank and sign a document what is the document about what i mean some some people are saying you lose 40 percent of your principal if you try discounting some are saying that the platform for the uh, rate discounting or for you to withdraw has been blocked i mean you don't have answers you don't know what is going on yeah. you don't know what is going the bankers themselves don't know what is going on from the treasury department to the branch they can't give you answers they can't give you answers so why do you ask me to go and sign on to a debt uh, exchange is a form that i know nothing about the calculation is you can't even understand. They didn't. They didn't Why? explain. They didn't explain what document, but they asked you to come and sign. They just said you pass by. There, there is a document for us to sign and submit by 11. That's what they said. That, just that. What document? How how does it work? They don't. They can't give you that explanation. They can't tell you. Just come. It's like they are coercing you. It's they are afraid. Just come. Come. There is a document. Come and sign. Uh, before 11. And I mean, how, how do you communicate to somebody you borrowed money from? If the government had given me money and I had defaulted, or I'm saying that I wouldn't pay, I would have given a collateral for such an amount. So if there is any restructuring, you need to get back to me. If I was the one doing this as a customer or as a client that you have given monies to, would governments have accepted that? So I mean, don't understand. That is what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing. It's you, like you are coercing me. Yeah, you make you make a very interesting point. And uh, Samuel, Samuel, let me let me bring you in here on that point. Do you feel there's a subtle coercion of individual bondholders to sign on um, to this? Do you get us that sense when you when you had that briefing from Data Bag at all? Yes, um, to a very extent, yes. Because even though the the, the word the word voluntary was quite repeatedly yeah. used, but it was also no. clear that they mentioned that, look, okay. the All fiscal right. stability amount okay. that we have set aside okay. was not going to, uh, you know, benefit people who do not sign on. So that is one indication that you are supposed to sign on. Uh, number two, given the government did not tell us what the consequence of not signing on is, the Jamaican example was explained as successful because people wanted the country and not their personal individual self. So in this case, they are trying to tell us that if we do not sign up to this or come to exchange our bond, we are holding the country into economic, continuous economic crisis without any potential future of that particular country. But what they should have also mentioned, which they didn't, was that the mismanagement, the borrowing, the lack of evidence of those borrowing that we never saw was not done by we individual bondholders. We are just a victim of somebody's own decision making um, that even us until uh, a few days to us deciding to go to IMF, the finance minister had reiterated his stance that we are not going to IMF, which gave us all confidence that we are not going to IMF, our bonds are going to be safe. So even though they use the word voluntary, but some of the terms, as provided, seems as if it is going to be kind of coerced. You're going to coerce into, you know, bringing back your old bond in exchange for the new bond, which the explanation is 2023 is 0%, 2024 is 5%, but they are going to be different bonds. My understanding is depending on the amount of value of your principal now, they are going to be different bond that's going to be distributed with different coupon rate and different uh, maturity dates as well. Uh, we are unsure which ones, even if you decide to exchange, which ones you are going to get and how the benefit is going to be distributed. Some of them are going to be 15 years, others are going to be 14, 10 years, 7 years, 8 years. And with these, all, with all the, the question is, um, would you, you are holding my money until, let's say, 15 years. The intention of using that money, the potential inflation, this year alone we have about 50% probably 50% inflation. Um, by the time or I have received all my money, I would have received all my money, the value of the money would have been nothing compared to 
uh, the, the initial intent of investing. And also, what I am also getting is that the way things are going, I think the government is indirectly in informing all Ghanaians that do not come back to invest your money in government bonds anymore because I have sworn out of it and I'm never, ever, regardless of what the interest is, what the attractiveness is, I'm never, ever, ever going to invest in bonds in Ghana anymore. And that, that, that's my decision based on this. Uh, discussions we had. Dr. Rich Manichuan, Samuel is right, is it not, that under the current investment climate, if you sign on to this debt exchange, your money is, in effect, a write-off because the, the length of time that it will take for you to mature and the coupon that has now been slashed quite dramatically, in addition to the inflation, the depreciation of the CD, it, it's, it, your money is gone, is it not? The case. How does it turn here? Yeah, you. Goodness me. Uh, we, we having challenges with that line. Dr. Chen, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. I don't know if you heard my question. Okay, we'll fix that. We'll have the terrible feedback from Dr. Chen. Let me bring in the Reverend. I mean, Reverend, as a bondholder, Yes. Do you feel you've been adequately informed, adequately informed to equip you to make a decision either to sign on to the exchange or not? Yesterday afternoon, late afternoon, I received a call from the whole main branch of Ghana Commercial Bank that mm -hmm. I should come to the bank to sign a form. And I told them that I'm in Accra. So coming down to Ho would be a problem. And they asked me to go to the nearest uh, bank to sign. And this morning I went to Tetano branch. And I asked the lady, the content of the paper, the document to be signed. And she asked me to go and talk to another man. But there was uh, people with him. So I, couldn't, so I asked the lady to give me a copy so that I can come go study it because I'm having a friend. My catechist also is a bank worker. So we are looking at the business tomorrow before I know what to do. Okay. Did they, did they, did they explain to you no. what, what, what this form is? No. Because I'm saying that they didn't say it. The person who, who explained it to me was busy. There were a lot of people on him. So he couldn't, I couldn't talk to him, but I took the form from a lady to come and study. Okay. So, and, and, yeah. and have you studied the forms yet? Uh, tomorrow morning before I see my banker friend for the form. Okay. Will you sign on to the debt exchange program? I don't think so. Let me see my dating and know how to do my brother. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I mean, uh, uh, you, you see, sometimes we can talk out of frustration, and we need to take time and see the reality, my brother. So allow me to talk to my friend tomorrow. Yeah, and take his advice. Okay, I mean, Roberta, uh, will you sign on to this Dedestin program? Will you? Will you sign on? I won't sign on because it was something contractual. I have a form. Nobody told me that I'll be signing because if I sign on, then it means that I sign on to a new contract. When I was going to buy or when I was going for the investment, nobody told me that there will be, I mean, uh, 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 how should I put it, a, a new contract. I'm not signing on. All I want is my money. How do I survive? All I need is that government should give me my 18, my 17 and, and half years money that I took. You were asking if uh, bondholders are rich. I mean, what, how do you say that they are rich? How much do I even have in the bonds? And I've told you how I got my money. When you go with signed forms, you know where the, the bondholder had his funds or money from to purchase the investment. So why do you rope me in? I just need my money. I'm not signing any form. 15 years. I will have gone to pension. I will have, I mean, been, been over 60 years. If you spread it 
for 15 years. I will not have been over 60 years. So all I need and what all I'm calling for is that I am a vulnerable person. My family relies on me, and that is the coupon we are surviving on. So I am begging the government. I am I'm not here political or anything, but as an individual who has suffered, wet for 17 and a half years, had my money and bought bonds. Why bondholders? Why are you including bondholders? Is there no other way that you can cut down the uh, 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 expenditures or have this debt issue uh, resolved? So what do you think bondholders? If we are to sacrifice, then it should cut across every single person, not only bondholders, every single person to sacrifice. So why is it about bondholders? You promised us heaven and earth that bondholders weren't going to be included in the debt uh, exchange. So can't we trust the people who we have uh, 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 what, voted for to come and serve us? Can't we trust their words? You told us, you promised. So what happened? You should be able to stick to your words. I am passionate because I worked hard for that money. I worked hard for that money. Nobody gave me that money. I worked for it. So I am not signing on to any debt exchange. I personally sent the minister a message that he should look at it. Beginning, I sent him a message that I'm not working. He didn't respond. So why do you do that? Nobody touches our bond hold, holding. So I am not signing on. My children are here. They are here with me. I pay school fees. I mean, how much do I get on the bond? You should, uh, you should even be asking me how much money I have. If I have two million Ghana cities, it is lots of sacrifice that I, have, I will have made before getting that money. So please, I'm not signing on. Nobody is signing on. And government should just take its hands off our, our, our holdings. If there is any other way they can find, if they will cut their expenditures and then reduce their size of government, they should do that. Nobody mm. touches my money. Nobody. Mm. Uh, Nobody and, touches my money. Uh, and, and by the way, I've, I've listened to, and I, I saw in the background your, your children. I, I'm assuming that they were, they were children when you were talking about come, them. Come. Yeah, and, and I must indicate that the lawyers who had come together uh, to lead the, uh, the class action have already said that they are, they, those who have signed on to the class action, 250 of them and, 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 and growing, uh, will not sign on uh, to the board, uh, to that exchange. They are seeking to meet the, the, the government on this and negotiate uh, an exemption for the individual bondholders. And I, I believe that's what all the bondholders uh, are saying. Uh, let me let me ask you very quickly, Reverend. Reverend, yes. uh, have you have you decided to join the class action that the that has been is been pushed forward now? Uh, in our code of ethics, we are not allowed to join a demonstration group or those things. No, it's, this is not demonstration. This is a group that is going to uh, try and go to court on your behalf. Yes. Oh, why not? I would like it to defend my cause. I would like it, and I will support them. I will support them. So okay. that justice is done okay. to our situation, my brother. Great. Um, let me bring in uh, Chiang again. Let's hope that his line holds up now. Um, the, apologies uh, for the terrible connection tonight, Dr. Chiang But I was asking you earlier, um, when you, you listen to Samuel, who explains the current economic circumstances that already negatively is affecting investments, inflation has taken us eating away everything if you are investing, depreciation as well, and then you, if you dare join the uh, debt action program, you have a situation over 15 years when by the end of it, your money is a complete write-off. You agree with that assessment that he made? Definitely, time value of money is not the same. So I agree. If you extend it to 15 years, if 1 million is extended to 15 years, 15 years, 1 million could be zero, not even non negative. So I just agree with them that if you extend it to that much, then you might possibly find a, a, what we call a sweetener. I mean, sweetener, like in other jurisdictions, they do index linking. Index linking means that anytime inflation 
goes up, your bond is meant, the value is maintained. These are what they call the carrots, the carrots and the sweetener. If you're going to go to that length of time, you need to in, include something that will make it attractive to those who, who are, because other than that, one million of today is not the same one million of even yeah, tomorrow, considering the type of inflation that we mm. have and where we have been. But, uh, Ivan, let me make this point clear. We find ourselves at this point. I'm not going to the history of what brought us here. The whole estate started on a wrong footing because there is a literature that says that when you start and you begin to exclude certain categories of bondholders, you have this challenge. And some countries have had it, and they have a lot of lengthy legal arguments going on over and over the years. Because immediately he came, he came with the exemption of the, 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 the people. I, it's, an illit- it's an IMF literature. It says 2021. It said if you're doing any debt restructuring and you want to do it, you must make yourself clear so that there is no exception and inclusion. Once you do inclusion, this one comes in and says, look, I want to be excluded. This one comes in. So in the end, you're going to have litigation upon litigation although you have these immunity clause that you're saying, but people will go, still go to court, and it's going to affect the process. Because the country where we are led, we are, we are replicating, they made sure that the engage, stakeholder engagement was made, and various options were suggested, and discussion went on. And that took to only two months. But the way we are going, who knows that next week the date would have to be extended, because you need, you need a minimum of 80%. For you to be able to have the uh, the board approval of the SLA, so we in a, we are in a serious trouble. We are in a serious trouble. Indeed. And if you listen to what all these people have been saying in the, on the radio and on TV, it's quite pathetic. It's quite Indeed, pathetic. we are in serious it's trouble. In and uh, we talk about we, we talk about the individuals that you've had tonight, Reverend, who's retired and, and took all his money and, and invested in there, uh, Roberta, uh, Samuel, and, and and there are many, many, many more. Uh, individual stories such as we've had uh, tonight and we, we would we'll, we'll watch how this um, class action unfolds we'll speak to their architects uh, in, in, the, in the coming days and weeks as uh, we approach this deadline for uh, all bondholders institutional individual to sign on enjoy the rest of the evening